So here's a basic pro tip. Don't buy iPhone SE. It's that simple. Just don't buy it. No, I'm kidding. Let's get into some details of why you should not buy the 2020 version of the iPhone SE. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the brand new iPhone SE and why I personally believe it is not the right budget phone to buy in 2020. If we look at it in America, they've released it for 399 USD, which should equate to 610 Australian dollars with a direct conversion at the very bad conversion rate at the moment. But instead, it equates to 749 Australian dollars for the very bottom of the range iPhone SE. Now this is meant to be a budget phone from Apple and yet all they've done is taken an old iPhone 6, 7, 8, whatever you want to compare it to and thrown it back into the market at a very expensive price in Australia if I'm being honest with you. Yes, you do get the A13 chip which is the same chip in the iPhone 11, 11 Pro Max, everything in the 11 series. You do get 4K video recording and all these great little knick-knack quirks that are gonna make you wanna think it's a good phone. But in reality, it's a big forehead, a big chin, touch ID, fingerprint sensor on the bottom where you actually have to touch the button. It's a physical button. It has a 720p HD screen instead of a 1080p. It's all the way back down to 60 hertz a second. It isn't a high refresh rate like all the new flagships are, but it is a budget phone. So I guess that's what you kind of have to expect. You have to take some hits and the good with the bad. Now what really gets me is the fact that you can get much better, if not even equivalent iPhones for significantly less right now in 2020 in Australia. So for example, if I read you something here that I've taken a note of before, the iPhone 7, a refurbished model given, you can pick it up for 255 Australian dollars or equivalent to 160 US dollars. That's dirt cheap. From a comparative point of view, an iPhone 7 and the brand new SE, besides the chip itself and a few little knickknacks here and there, it isn't too much of a difference. And if you're looking for a budget phone, this is one of the best budget phones you can buy. Now, on the other hand, if you are looking to spend that $749, why would you not go out and buy the brand new iPhone 11, which the chip was designed for, it was built for it, and it has all the better features. You can easily pick up an iPhone 11 for 879 Australian or 575 USD. That's an extra $120 or so for a huge difference in performance, models, specs, absolutely everything. Now, my personal opinion, I would be buying the iPhone 11 over the iPhone SE because as we all know, iPhones hold their value really, really well. If you buy an SE, it's gonna drop in value pretty quickly. But if you buy an iPhone 11, in two, three years time, it's still gonna hold a pretty decent value. When you unbox the device as well, all you get inside is a five watt charger, a lightning cable, and a lightning set of headphones. There's no headphone jack in this budget phone, which if you compare it to any other Android device out there, and yes, if you're new to the channel, I do use Android, but I also use Apple devices for a lot of my stuff. So I run a pretty unbiased opinion when it comes to these devices. If you were to compare an $850 Android device to an $850 budget iPhone, you'd quickly find that the Android device is much better in every way, shape or form because there's a lot more competition in that space. Unfortunately, and fortunately I guess for Apple, Apple doesn't have this competition so they can bang out an $800 budget phone and everybody will go and buy it because it's an Apple device. Personally, I wouldn't buy the iPhone SE. I would recommend going to that iPhone 11 stage if you can actually afford a little bit more of a jump up or looking for a refurbished model of the iPhone 7 for $250. That's ridiculous. That is a very good price point for brand new, in the box, perfect condition iPhone. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little rant here today. If you did, smash that subscribe button, 2020 style. We're almost at that 2000 subscriber count number, which is really good news. Really excited to see that tick over. But because we are still in quarantine period, that means we're pumping out a lot more content as well. So usually I'd see you every Monday, but today being Wednesday, I will see you on Friday.